hardware circular addressing okay actually uh, the processor that we design it has to support circular shifts and circular buffering in addition to linear buffering it has to support circular buffering first let us see what is this linear buffering is and then we'll move on to the concept of circular buffering okay now consider the uh, fourth order fir filters difference equation let us take a fourth order fir filter and its difference equation can be expressed like this b not x of n plus b1 x of n minus 1 plus b2 x of n minus 2 plus b3 x of n minus 3 if i draw the direct form realization structure for this i get a structure like this this is the direct form realization structure for fourth order fir filter so as we can see here we need four memory locations to store the current sample and three previous samples current sample here is x of n x of n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 are the three previous samples so we need four memory locations for storage of this values okay and when a new sample is entering the system what we will do we will usually discard the oldest sample from the system and we have to get the new sample this is how the data will be processed through this direct form system or direct form structure so when in a new sample is acquired the oldest sample has to be discarded and what we have to do this sample once it is discarded we will be moving this to this position and this to this position and this will be coming here and a new sample will come this, to this place right this is how the data will be executed and it will be shifted and that is called linear shift or we can name it as linear buffering its memory address location is being mentioned here see we, as i told you there are four memory locations required to store the current sample and the past three samples so here this picture or this diagram a uh, shows us the time instant of n is equal to 3 so when we take n as 3 this is x of 3 will be the current sample x of 2 x of 1 and x of 0 will be the previous three previous samples and we have used the memory locations from 2001 to 2004 so x of 0 x of 1 x of 2 and x of 3 now this is the current value and all these three are the previous value now if the time index changes for the next time instant that is for n is equal to 4 what happens we will be moving this value here that is we have to discard this oldest sample x of n minus 3 which is in this case x of 0 this has to be discarded and x of 3 moves to this position x of 2 moves to this position x of 1 will move to this position and we have to get the new sample in x of that is 2004 so for time index of n is equal to 4 the data will be like this now this becomes the current and all these three becomes the previous and we have discarded this oldest sample oldest sample is discarded this is called linear shift or we can say linear buffering the same thing has been explained here for the next time index what we have to do we have to shift this here and shift this over here shift this over here and this will move out of the memory address we have to discard it this is the case now if we uh, look into these two what we can observe is for each and every time index whenever it is getting incremented three samples are three samples remains the same see here if we compare this picture a with this picture b it is having x of 1 x of 2 x of 3 this picture b is also having x of 1 x of 2 x of 3 okay but what we are doing here whenever we prefer linear buffering we are performing shift three times and we are getting the new sample to the fourth location so data is getting shifted three times which is going to uh, consume a bit of time so wherever um, that is possible we we have to reduce the time consumption we have to reduce the execution time in order to speed up the operation so that the processor can be used for real-time applications this is our aim right so here we have to perform three different three times we have to shift the samples 
and then get the new sample. But when we compare the adjacent or consecutive time instances, we have three samples similar. X1, X2, X3 is common to both the time instances. Only thing is X of 0 is present here, X of 4 is present here. So instead of performing shift three times, what we can do is we can very well remove this X of 0 alone and place this new sample or get this new sample X of 4 in this memory location 2001. So that we can thereby we can avoid all these three shifts. We need not shift this X of 3 to this place and this place and this. So this can be avoided whenever we go for circular buffering. That is called circular shift. Now can, if we can see here a time index 3, n is equal to 3, x1, x2, x3 will be there. This is the current, this is previous, previous and the oldest sample is x of 0. So when we switch over to the next time instant, the new sample that we are going to get is x of 4. So instead of x of 0, we can have x of 4, that is we can discard this x of 0 from this place alone and we can get the new sample in this location of 2001. So what happens here? There is no time shifts or the shift of sample is being performed for these three locations. 2002, 2003, 2004, it remains the same for the previous and the present time instances. Thereby, we can a bit execute, uh, that is, uh, reduce the execution time. We can speed up the process. And this is called circular buffering. So, whenever we go for circular buffering, a very clear example has been mentioned here. See here, this picture A is for time index n is equal to 5. So, this 5 location, x of 5, this location is the newest location. When x of 5 is the newest location, we can say x of 2 is the oldest location. So, whenever we increase the time instant by one unit, that is for the next time instant, what we can do? Now, this is the oldest sample, right? And we can discard this x of 2 and get the next sample x of 6 in this place of 2003. That is what is mentioned here. So for the next time instant of n is equal to 6, the newest sample is obtained in the place where we had oldest sample. So this x of 2 alone is being discarded and we are getting the new sample in this memory location. The other three samples remains in the same place. x of 4, x of 5 and x of 3 are not disturbed at all. So this is the case for n is equal to 6. Now, for the next time instant, what we can do for n is equal to 7. Now, at this time, x of 3 is the oldest. What we can do? We can get the newest sample in this location of 2004. So, this can be made as x of 7. And we can discard x of 3. That is what is done here. So, we are getting the, for the next time instant, x of 7 is obtained. That is the newest sample is obtained here and we are discarding x of 3. Once the newest sample is obtained, the oldest sample becomes x of 4. So what happens during the next time instant? This sample can be discarded and in this place of x of 4, we can get x of 8. Right? So this location can be used for getting the newest sample and in this case this becomes the oldest x of 5 becomes the oldest the same thing is getting going to get repeated so in each and every consecutive increment in time shift that is time base n what happens only one position is getting discarded and we are getting the new sample in that particular position thereby the other three time shifts can be avoided which in turn is going to result in increase in the speed of execution. And this is called circular buffering. So it will go like this. From 2001, if you are getting the new sample, 2004 will be the oldest sample. So for the next time base, this remains here and this position can be, made, uh, can be used for getting the new sample. Like this, we are going to shift. Okay, and uh, here we need two pointers. Whenever we go for circular buffering, we need two pointers because previously the newest sample, whatever may be the case, 
whatever may be the value of time based n if, if you compare these two pictures or these two diagrams the newest sample has been obtained only in this constant location of 2004 here the newest sample is 2003 here the newest sample is 2000 is been obtained in 2004 here also it is 2004 and here also it is 2004 here it is x of 3 and the next sample is x of 4. Whenever I increment the time base n for n is equal to 5, again what we will do, I will shift it here, shift it here, shift it here. This will be discarded and I am going to get the new sample only in the same address location. So the address location for getting the new sample is not getting changed in the case of linear buffering. Whereas if you take the circular buffering, this position of new sample where we get the new sample the address where we get the new sample is getting changed for each and every time base so we should uh, indicate two different pointers for representing the newest sample as well as the sample to be discarded for the next time base so there should be two pointers whenever we go for circular buffering only then it can be incremented that is for the next time base, oldest will be discarded and the newest will be taken into the particular address location. Because the newest location is different here. Here it is 2002, the newest here is 2003, here it is becoming 2004 and the next is, it is again 2001. It is getting circularly shifted. So there should be two pointers to specify the newest and the oldest samples. And that two pointers, we can name it as head and tail. So for any circular shift or circular addressing, there should be at least two pointers to mention the oldest and the newest sample, which we can name it as head and tail. Okay. This is called circular addressing or you can say circular buffer. This is one type of addressing modes of DSP processes. Okay. This in turn also will reduce the execution time. 